If you graph a function of one variable, you'll get some kind of curve. You can pick any x-coordinate, and the derivative at that point will be the slope of the curve above that x-coordinate. At any point on the function, the derivative is just a single number, and it tells you everything that you need to know about the slope of the function. But when you go to functions of more than one variable, the idea of a single number that tells you the slope of your function doesn't make any sense. To illustrate, let's make a function of two variables that gives a height for every x-y coordinate. This is basically a contour map. Darker green means higher up. I'll add contour lines, and we can pretend that this function is a hill that we're climbing. Say we're at a certain x-y coordinate, and we ask ourselves, what's the slope? Well, the answer depends on what direction you're looking. If you're looking uphill, then the slope will be positive, but if you're looking downhill, the slope will be negative. If you look in the y direction, you'll get a slope of zero. Any direction that you pick, you'll get a different slope. Clearly, a derivative that's just a single number cannot adequately define the slope of a function with more than one variable. So we use something called the gradient, which is a vector, not a scalar like the derivative. As a vector, it has a magnitude and a direction, so it can tell us both how steep something is and what direction is the slope. The gradient always points uphill, in the direction where the function is increasing the fastest, and its magnitude is the slope of the function in that direction. So over here, where the function is increasing very slowly, the vectors will be small. Here, where the hill is steeper, the vectors are longer. Now that we have a basic idea of what the gradient of a function looks like, let's see how we can actually calculate it from a given function f of x and y. The gradient of f is written with a little upside-down triangle called a del. It's a vector, and the x component is the partial of f with respect to x, the y component the partial of f with respect to y, and if there's a z component, it's the partial of f with respect to z, etc., etc. So let's say the function is xy squared plus 2x cubed. Now we'll find the gradient. The x component should be the partial with respect to x, so that's y squared plus 6x squared. Then the y component will be the partial with respect to y, which will be 2 times xy. The gradient vector is handy because once we have it, we can use it to find the derivative of the function in any direction. All we have to do is take the dot product of the gradient with a unit vector in the direction we want. For example, let's say the gradient of our function is 2x, 3x squared. Now if I want to find the derivative in the y direction, I'll just dot my gradient with j hat, which is the unit vector in the y direction. So that'll be 2x, 3x squared, dotted with 0, 1, which is just 3x squared, which is the derivative of this function in the y direction. What if you wanted to find the derivative of a function perpendicular to its gradient? Well, then you do the gradient dotted with a vector perpendicular to it. And since any two perpendicular vectors dot product is 0, that means the derivative perpendicular to the gradient will always be 0. And you can see that over here. Notice how the level curves or contour lines are always perpendicular to the gradient vectors. The concepts of the gradient will become extremely important as we move on in topics in vector calculus.